Hi, this is Larry with Man Cave Mayhem. Behind me, right there, right there, is my 2012 Suzuki Bergman Executive. It's a 650cc parallel twin sewing machine under a couch, basically. So I want to do a long-term review of this bike, and I want to bring you guys along, kind of show you the features that it has, the things I like, the things I'm not so fond of, and we'll just go from there. If you haven't yet, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Helps out my channel. Now let's get on with the video. Let's get into the specs of this bike. So the 2012 Suzuki Bergman is a four-stroke twin cylinder, double overhead cam, it has four valves per cylinder. It's 638 cc's or 38.9 cubic inches. The bore and stroke is 75.5 by 71.3 millimeter. Compression ratio is 11.2 to one. Of course, it's liquid cooled, electronic fuel injected. It's got a digital electronic ignition. Obviously, it's electric start. Max power is 40 kW or 55 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. The max torque is 62 Newton meters or 45.7 foot pounds at 5,000 RPM. The transmission is an electronically controlled CVT and the final drive they say is a V-belt but it is actually got a gearbox that feeds from the V-belt back to the rear wheel. So that's kind of a misnomer. So you do have a, a gearbox that has gear oil. Frames tubular steel. It's got a telescopic front fork with 41 millimeter inner tubes. The rear suspension is swing arm style, preloaded adjustable shock absorbers and a separate aluminum swing arm. Nothing fantastic as far as suspension. I can tell you over the miles that I've traveled on this bike, the suspension isn't the greatest, but it does okay for itself. The front wheel travel on the suspension is 105 millimeters or 4.1 inches. Front brakes, so you get two 260 millimeter discs with two piston calipers and the rear you have a single 250 millimeter disc with two piston rear calipers. As far as wheels are concerned, the front tire is 12070R15, rear tire is a 16070R14. Seat height is 750 millimeters or 29.5 inches. Dry weight on this beast is 525 pounds dry now. That's that's dry. You're looking at close to 600 pounds when you got that thing loaded down, maybe more. Fuel capacity is 15 liters or four US gallons. Now the top speed on this, and I've had it upwards in that ballpark or close to it. The speedo is, isn't always accurate, but top speed's 177 kilometers or 110 miles per hour. And this whopping acceleration number will blow you out of your seat. In a quarter mile, it is a 16 second quarter mile. So the engine itself is a 360 degree parallel twin and it being a 360 degree, the pistons raise up at the same time together. So in order to keep vibration to a minimum, there is counterbalance weights that smooth out the ride. And this thing does have a smooth engine note to it. It's quiet, it's like a sewing machine, as I said before. So uh, you really can't go wrong with this for commuting or any long travel even. I've heard people call these baby gold wings and they really are comfortable bikes to ride. Now let's go over some of the features. On the left hand switch gear, on the Bergman Executive, it comes with electric mirrors that open and close automatically. That's the blue button on the top. As you work your way down, you have your high low beams. You have the up down switch for your manual mode on your CVT transmission, which I never really use that much. You also have the power button, which changes the power uh, RPMs on the CVT transmission, your turn signals, and your horn. Right hand switch gear has your kill switch, your hazard switch, your adjustable windscreen, which is electric, which makes it very nice for travel, and on the fly adjustments, and your starter switch. This Bergman Executive is no slouch for storage either. It has a huge 56 liter underseat storage compartment, enough for normal size, two full face helmets and three front compartments for small items too. The digital instrument cluster displays the speedometer, the odometer, it has two trip meters, has an oil change maintenance light, a shift indicator, a dummy light for the coolant temperature, average miles per gallon, 
it has outside ambient temperature and time depending on the mode settings that you put it in. So the original owner purchased this bike for 9,500 bucks and added a ton of aftermarket goodies to it. I was able to enjoy this bike for half the price. I only say this because since they don't make these bikes anymore, you can still find really good used bikes and get a lot of life out of them. One of the accessories added were Kur Kurakian grips. Hope I'm saying that right. Another added accessory is Motorcycle Larry's Ram Ball Mount covers for the brake reservoirs. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, these are no longer in production. One of my favorite accessories is the Ram cup holder. I catch a lot of grief for that, but man, it's great on long trips. Another added feature is the breakaway cruise control, which I find is super handy on long trips when your hand's about ready to fall off. I get a lot of questions about my seat. The seat is made by Russell Daylong, and they do custom seats for all kinds of motorcycles. I, they're called Russell Daylong saddles, I believe, and you can catch them on the internet. They still are in business, uh, but they actually fit the seat to each individual rider. Another add-on is the Path Blazer headlight modulator. Uh, this thing modulates the headlights with the high beams on during the day. It also has a light sensor on it that when it becomes dark, the high beams act as regular high beams at night. And also, a tail blazer was added, which flashes the lights when you apply the brakes. It stops to get a vehicle's attention uh, that are behind you. I personally added a turn signal beeper. You can either have it on or off. I leave it off most of the time, the majority of the time in town, but when I'm on the freeway, or on long runs, it's nice to have it on. If you have it on in the city uh, while you're stopped at a light with the turn signal on, you get everybody's attention because it's really loud. So I don't use it that much, but it's nice to have. In this picture, you can also see a 12 volt plug-in to keep the battery charged or also to plug in uh, heated vests or gloves or whatever. The other button next to that is for the garage door opener. And last but not least, you have the GV E450 mono lock top case with the adapter for the Suzuki Bergman. And it has a 45 liter capacity. Okay, so here are some of the things that <clears throat> you may not like or I may not like. Well, some of the things I don't like and some of the things you probably wouldn't like if you had this bike. One of my concerns on, on this bike has always been the CVT belt. Because of the design of this bike, um, the CVT belt is considered permanent. Well, to get to that belt is very difficult and it would probably cost you $1,000 of the dealership to have that fixed. Um, I think I could probably do it, but you have to re pretty much remove the motor to do it and it wouldn't be an easy task. That being said, I haven't had any issues with the CVT belt. And from what I understand, the 2012 model does have some upgrades on the belt uh, to alleviate any issues that they were having in the past. That being said, that I think is a weak point. Um, another thing that people may not like is the, the stigma of scooters. Uh, that is a maxi scooter. I can't tell you how many times I've given the old motorcycle wave and uh, to an on oncoming Harley or a group of Harleys and of course they wave back just too late to realize that I'm on a scooter they think oh he's on a he's on a touring bike when you look at it from the front it kind of looks like one but the minute they come alongside you and they see that scooter walk through or the step through scooter they realize and they shamefully pull their hand in quickly uh, so it's kind of funny I and it kind of makes me laugh because the reality of it is is you know everybody's out there just to ride and have fun and if you're on a scooter or if you're on a motorcycle or if you're on a moped for that matter who cares you know uh, I don't really need that to uh, feel manly I guess is, is what I'm trying to get at so that may be something that might uh, be a problem for you it's not for me other than that the bike has been a great bike I I've put 14,000 miles on it. Nancy and I have taken our 
you know, scooters from here on Route 66 all the way to Chicago and back. And, and we've also done uh, the West Coast here on the scooters, and uh, they've been fantastic. They've, they've been a joy to ride. They've got plenty of storage. So I would encourage you, if you are going to purchase a scooter, um, these Bergmans are available, and they're reasonable. Look for a deal. You can probably find a good deal with low mileage. If you take care of it, uh, you won't have any issues. Look on my channel. I have all kinds of how-to videos on a lot of the things on these scooters, so feel free to browse my channel. Um, that would be the only other negative thing is there's a lot of plastics on the bike, so you, you do have to remove a lot of plastics to get to things. But other than that, they're a lot of fun. They're a pleasure to ride, and uh, I can't say enough good things about them. That's going to about wrap it up for this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and just remember, I'm just a man in a cave causing mayhem. Thanks again, guys, for watching.